Hey guys, it's me, David, and welcome back to another LEGO Star Wars review. Today I have one of the biggest LEGO Star Wars sets of the Summer Wave of 23, which is 75365 Yavin 4 Rebel Base. Now this set's going to retail for $170 US dollars, and it's going to come with 1,066 pieces. It's thankfully going to come with 12 minifigures, which is pretty exciting. And it'll go on sale August 1st of 2023. I'll have a link down in the description to LEGO.com. It's affiliated. It helps out the channel. And lastly, I do want to thank LEGO for sending the set over for review. All right, so let's talk about the Yavin 4 Rebel Base. So first off, for my hardcore LEGO Star Wars collectors out there, you probably are pretty excited by the fact that LEGO finally made a Yavin 4 Rebel Base, mainly because going back to the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary, there was this concept art shown of a LEGO Star Wars Yavin 4 Rebel Base, but it looked a lot different than what we have here. I'll put it on screen to show exactly what I'm talking about, but that Visual Dictionary came out over a decade ago. So since then, a lot of fans have been talking about what what a modern Yavin 4 base would look like. And so here in 2023, we are finally getting that. So personally speaking, I love the idea of a Yavin 4 Rebel base on paper, but Lego's execution here, not the biggest fan of the design so far. Obviously I wanna see it in depth and see what it's like in person and give you guys my thoughts on it, but just general impressions off the box here, doesn't look that great. In fact, it really looks similar to Darth Vader's castle from a few years back, like very, very similar. And in fact, I looked up Vader's castle and the piece count is almost exactly the same as Yavin 4 here, which is wild to me because that was a $130 set. This is 170. I mean, granted this has, I think seven or eight more minifigures than Vader's castle had. So that makes sense. And then on top of that inflation. So I see why the set's $170, but still when you compare it to Darth Vader's castle and what you could have gotten a few years back, this isn't looking the greatest in terms of value. But again, the minifigures I feel like will be the savior. I know a lot of fans out there are excited about the figures. On the back of the box, there does seem to be a good amount of play features. So I'm definitely very interested to see what the overall package is like with this Lego Star Wars set to see if it's really worth that $170 price tag. So without further ado, let's go into the in-depth and see Yavin 4 Rebel Base. So first off, I was actually kind of caught off guard by how modular this set is and Lego really wants you to build it modularly and they give you six instruction booklets, which is wild. So they obviously are encouraging uh, family and friends to build together, so that's great. And then you also get a pretty small size sticker sheet. Next, we're gonna go into the 12 minifigures. We have Garvin Dreas or Red Leader as the first figure with a brand new looking helmet. Man, is this look fantastic. Lego went all out on the printing. Next, we have John Vander or Gold Leader. We actually see him also pop up in Rogue One, which I thought was a really cool Easter egg. Also a great looking minifigure with great printing. Next up, we have General Dodonna, which I do believe is the exact same figure that we get from the X-Wing Starfighter set. So this is not a new figure for the Avon 4 Rebel base. After that, we have C-3PO. This is the same version that we get in the Diorama Trash Compactor. So arm printing, but not side leg printing. Next up, we have Chewbacca with, of course, his bowcaster weapon. Then after that, we have a Rebel Fleet Trooper. Unfortunately, we only get one Fleet Trooper, which I really wish we got at least two in this set, but it's just one. It's a brand new design. After that, we have a Rebel crew member. This is a female Rebel crew member, and she looks really good, has a little wrench as well. Next, we have R2-D2, which I can confirm has back printing, so that's nice to see. Unfortunately, though, the next astromech droid, R2-BHD, or Gold Leader's uh, Ashmic Droid for the Y-Wing does not have back printing, which is pretty unfortunate for such a high price set. Next up, we have Princess Leia, which is indeed a brand new version. However, her hair piece has been reused before, specifically on Padme, which I suppose makes sense. Overall, I still think it's a great looking minifigure. Next, we have Han Solo, which is a new version, and you'll see he has his medallion award, which is really cool. And you'll also notice that the medallion is actually a separate uh, piece, which is just really unique. And I think Lego did a great job with that concept. And then you'll see here on our last minifigure, Luke Skywalker is also a new version and also has an award medallion as well and looks fantastic. I, I would personally say Luke Skywalker in this set is my favorite version of Luke we've ever gotten. Lastly, it's worth noting that you do actually get an extra medallion piece, which I thought was really cool. Now going on to the set, first off, we'll take a look at the one vehicle in this, which is the Y-Wing. Personally speaking, I'm not a big fan of this design or just this scale in general, this mid scale or mini Y wing. It, it does, you know, what it needs to, which is, you know, be a Y wing and a smaller scale. 
but it doesn't scale well to other sets. You can indeed put the astromech droid in the Y-Wing, which it looks okay. Again, this is where things get a little funky given that it's like kind of a mid-scale type of size. You also have a little rotating turret, and you also have a very small cockpit area that just barely fits the minifigure. You really have to flatten them down in there, but there is something really cool, a brand new printed piece in this set. It's a targeting computer and on it says 1977, the year Star Wars was released. That's a great Easter egg. Good job, Lego. Last up, of course, you need some stairs to get into your Y-Wing. Next, we have this ground crew transport speeder, which looks actually pretty good. I love the olive green color. It's a very simple build, but it's very effective. I, I actually really like how Lego has designed this. I could easily see myself wanting to build like three or four of these for not just a rebel base, but for any base. Inside, you'll notice there's some little lights and it's very easy to attach the minifigure. And then you can also include up to four minifigures on the backside, or you can carry cargo up to you. But I gotta say, this is a lot of fun to roam around the base. And speaking of the base, let's go ahead and get into the main section of the build. First off, again, you can take that Y-wing through the front door so it is built so that it could fit properly. You couldn't put the uh, you know X-wing starfighter or anything like that through the door. You'll also notice that these front panels here, they all open uh, like a little bit, maybe like a 15-ish degree angle, which doesn't really make sense because as you can see, this entire set comes apart modularly. So if you want to get into the rooms, it's fairly easy all you have to do is detach a section so the way i'm going to show this to you guys is section by section so we'll go ahead and start off with the left side of the base first off on the bottom side there is these two little cabinets one of which has some thermal detonators on the top side and on the bottom side i'm not sure what this is supposed to be maybe some bacta if i had to make a guess and then everything else down here is pretty empty no stickers or anything like that there is a little ladder that leads you up onto the second floor nice little sticker piece and then this is where it gets cool i love this rebel targeting computer uh, showing you know the time left of the Death Star being in range of Yavin 4. Great, great little piece. Unfortunately, is a sticker. It's not printed. I really wish it was printed, but it still looks really good. Next, we have the right side of the base, which as we're looking at right now, the exterior does have a few plants, a few masonry bricks to add a little bit of detail, nothing crazy. The bottom floor is completely empty, so we're going to go up to the second floor, which has yet another great scene of General Dodonna showing how to use the Death Star plans and blow up the Death Star. I absolutely love this. It shows the old school computer. There's a little sticker off on the side of the wall, and there's this water machine thing. What is this? <laughs> on the back side, you'll see a Rebel logo. And then on the bottom back side, you'll also see there's a little sticker showing a Y-Wing, uh, maybe how to fix it, I assume. Next, we have the midsection or the connecting bridge between the two outer sections. And as you can see, it's a pretty bare bones area. There's this one single targeting computer on the inside with a TIE fighter on it. And it's connected into this little play function where it moves two turrets at once that you can fire some uh, stud launchers, which is definitely fun for kids, but you know, doesn't really add too much to the set for me personally. Second to last, we have the top section of the base where, as you can see, it's a nice, fairly large build. This is also what's going to hold the gallery or the uh, ceremony space for the end of Star Wars A New Hope. On the top side, though, there's this little shield piece area, and it also detaches, and I don't know where this is supposed to go. It's a strange inclusion. As for the actual ceremony space, it's very tight. You can only fit maybe six to eight minifigures, eight being extremely claustrophobic in there. Lastly, we have this little tree section, which is completely hollow on the inside, hence why the design is so simple on the outside. And you'll see here that it has a function which you can take the Rebel Fleet Trooper, put it in its little observatory tower, and bring it up to a higher point. So that's why the tree is simple, but still, I think Lego could have at least added a few more tree limbs, a little more leaves here and there. It's just way too simple of a tree, especially for Yavin, which has a lot of trees and it's in a giant jungle, basically. So I think Lego could have done a better job there. So you know I had to do this. Next, we have a comparison. I had to bring out the Death Star playset next to the Yavin 4 playset. This is like an ultimate Lego Star Wars collector combo there. 
then we have all of these different sizes of Y-Wing going from UCS to normal playset to the mid scale that we get in the Yavin 4 base. And as you can see, they are definitely different in size uh, between each other, like significantly. So very interesting to see all of them side by side. I got to say, it's very fun having that Death Star next to the Yavin 4 playset. And overall, this is an okay set. It's not perfect. You know, I do wish we got a full size uh, Y-Wing, but the base would need to be bigger to accommodate that. So you know, I do wish this set was actually indeed a little bit bigger. All right, so to wrap things up on the Yavin 4 Rebel base, first off, got to give props to LEGO, 12 minifigures and under a $200 uh, LEGO Star Wars set that is very uncommon nowadays, unfortunately. Uh, but here we have a $170 set with 12 minifigures. That is great. I think all the minifigures are really good, like really, really good. Great selection, you know, I don't really have many complaints about the figures, you know, we could have gotten maybe a few more of the Rebel Fleet Troopers, I would have preferred to have a few more for the, you know, throne room scene. And speaking of the throne room and really all of the rooms is that they all are pretty small. There's just enough room to have a lot of playability and still reenact re scenes. You know, if you're a kid, you're kind of have a lot of fun. I even had fun, you know, with the, the little Death Star computer thing. Uh, that was cool, man. I, I really did get a little nostalgic, but it only makes me want this set to be bigger. And I don't normally say this about a lot of LEGO Star Wars sets, but I wish this set was priced higher. <laughs> and hear me out. Um, I wish this had like 16, 18 minifigures and it was $250. And the reason why I say that is we could have gotten a much bigger, you know, it doesn't have to be super detailed Yavin, but we could have gotten maybe a whole nother pillar size here, a couple more rooms. The rooms itself could have been a lot bigger, could have had a, a bigger opening here. And we could have also gotten a full size Y-Wing. I think at $250, 16, 18 minifigures, a much bigger looking version, a blown up version of this Yavin 4 base that would have been perfect. It would have still been a reasonably accessible uh, playset to most LEGO Star Wars fans. I know $250 is kind of a breaking point or even $200 is a breaking point for most fans. Uh, but I really think LEGO should have gone a little further with Yavin 4. It is so iconic. It is based off the original Star Wars movie that started all of this. So Yavin 4 is a big deal. And I really wanted Lego to go harder than this. You know, maybe in the future, a few years down the line, we'll get a Master Builder series, you know, $300, $400. Maybe that'll be the better set that I personally will like. But I understand this had to be a play set, you know, it had to meet a certain price point of $170. And so for what it is, for what it's contained in, it's a good set. You know, it, it hits pretty much all the marks that you would want in a Yavin 4 set. I'm not the biggest fan of this Y-Wing. I mean, I, I would never use it anywhere else other than this set. I would never use it in a mock or anything like that. But for, I guess, a kid who's getting this set, you get a cool vehicle and that's what matters to them. But the problem for me is that when I take this Y-Wing, it doesn't scale well at all to the other X-Wing that's still available in the market. So that's why I really want, you know, a $200, $250 Yavin so we can get a full size Y-Wing. But I understand if they make it full size, it can't go through the door. And so they'd have to blow up the whole base. And that goes back to my point of why this set should be higher priced and bigger. You know, this is a very interesting set. It, Lego intentionally has so many different instruction booklets. It's designed to be built with family and friends, which I think is cool and very refreshing concept for a Lego Star Wars set. But in terms of that $170 price point, I don't feel like you're getting exactly $170 worth of like Lego bricks. It was very easy to get through this set, very easy build, nothing crazy going on here. Uh, I've, I've built other $170 sets like the Justifier and I guess the AT-AT Walker I think is $160, $170. Those both have more you know, complex techniques and, and just are more interesting builds. This was a little more on the simple side. And, you know, granted it is just a giant building, so, you know, is what it is. But I still think LEGO could have built out these rooms, definitely could have made a better tree. <laughs> definitely, definitely could have been a better tree. This is, uh, whew, it's a bit rough. So my point being is that I do think this is a set worth picking up at some point. I don't think this is something you absolutely need to get day one on August 1st. I think if you can wait for it to drop in price, maybe to 150, 140, I think that's the sweet spot to pick this bad boy up. But until then, 170 is just a little too high for me. Hope you guys have a great, wonderful day. Thanks again to LEGO for sending this set over for review. And I will see you guys in the next review. Bye-bye.